Episode 3 of Kenobi just released and here are my thoughts. I'm going to start off with giving my overall thoughts on the whole episode, then move into specific points in the episode after. And overall, this is my favourite episode we've got so far. And everything I wanted them to do from last week, coming into this week, they're able to do and execute really well. Also, some of the problems I had with last week's episode, they were able to undo them in this episode. Like last week, I wasn't so keen on Leia's character. However, this week, I thought it worked really well, her and Obi-Wan Kenobi together. And it's the conversations and the way they're interacting with each other worked a lot more than it did last week for me. I think they improved upon Reva's character. They gave us a bit more of a background and an understanding about why she's doing what she's doing whilst also introducing Darth Vader and using him in a very well and effective manner as well and Ewan McGregor also had a great performance with Obi-Wan Kenobi again and just as I said last week I wanted to see more of his reflection upon knowing that Anakin is Darth Vader and we got to see a lot more of that in this episode so overall I think this was a great episode. So starting off with the episode we start off with Obi-Wan Kenobi Looks like he's calling upon Qui-Gon Jinn as he's calling upon his master. Whilst we're hearing flashbacks from Phantom Menace and also Revenge of the Sith. And I think it just confirms that we're going to see Qui-Gon Jinn in this um, series. It might be as a Force ghost or it might just be more of him talking to um, Kenobi through the Force. And I feel like we'll see him in next episode as well. Whilst he recovers, whilst he's recovering, we'll, we'll see um, Obi-Wan Kenobi call upon Qui-Gon Jinn to see what he should do regarding Darth Vader and I feel like that's going to be quite an impactful scene for him and then we see our first full shots of Darth Vader and it looks like he's on Mustafar I'm not sure but however he's talking to Reva and we get to see Reva's intentions more as from last week I thought it was more about her wanting Obi-Wan Kenobi for something however this week it looks like Reva's intentions are more just in becoming the Grand Inquisitor just impressing Darth Vader and it looks like all the Inquisitors want to become the um, Grand Inquisitor as the other Inquisitors all have that same goal and drive to become the Grand Inquisitor and then to impress Darth Vader. Continuing from last week Obi-Wan Kenobi and Leia end up on a mining system and are making their way back home and what I also loved about this is this because last week as I said earlier Leia didn't work for me as much however this week I thought the pairing of those two together worked a lot more and also whilst they're on their journey, Obi-Wan having like flashbacks and having visions of like Anakin again. And I thought that was done really well as I wanted to see how he would deal and cope with finally knowing that Anakin's still alive. And you can see that it's physically like ha and mentally has a toll on him. And Leia and Obi-Wan end up getting a lift and also end up in the back of the truck with the stormtroopers. And this is interesting for me as we get to see someone that loves or that really likes the empire as you normally see it from the other side however seeing it from a side where someone says they like the law and order they like having order around it just shows that, that not everyone against the empire there's people that like it as well and this is what this episode's done well with me while they're getting the lift and with the stormtroopers they're able to make the scene so tense to make it seem like something's going to happen something's about to happen and eventually it does when they get checked and scanned and Obi-Wan has to get um, his blaster out. And at points I thought, is he going to get his lightsaber out? However, they got the blast, his blaster out and they were able to escape and end up going into hiding. And whilst that's happening, another great scene of Obi-Wan and Leia talking about Padme and talking about Anakin, not seeing it, saying if he knows her mother and wondering what her father's like. Whilst we'll get also an understanding and get to see a bit more into Obi's background about how um, he was taken when he was younger for the Jedi and that he thinks he has a brother and wish he knew his family a bit more. And I feel those are the parts that, that didn't work as well for me last week. However, this week they've done it really perfectly. And then we end up with the Inquisitors telling Darth Vader where um, Obi-Wan is and that they're on the mining system. And now we can understand a bit more where the Inquisitors and Reavers coming from as it looks like they all want to be the Grand Inquisitor and they all want their approval from um, Darth Vader for one reason or another and it all like they're competing with each other for that and whilst Darth Vader's coming we get to see or we see Obi-Wan Kenobi sense Darth Vader and then we finally get a shot of Darth Vader coming through the town and I thought this was brilliantly done as we see Darth Vader walking and the Inquisitor's behind him he's force choking people he's killing people and then we just get to see Obi-Wan looking through the window and all we can see is the eyes but we can see the terror in his eyes we can see how 
like upset he is with the situation. He feels that he let down Anakin and you can see all like the pain and fear literally in his eyes at that point. Even though it doesn't really make sense to me why he would wait. He could have just went with Leia to escape instead of just staying behind. However, he does and then Darth Vader ends up seeing him and catching him. And that encounter together, the first time they've seen each other since Mustafa was brilliant. With after 10 years, they finally meet and Obi-Wan's first words are to him, what have you become? With Vader replying, I am what you made me. And I feel the whole interaction from that part to the end just worked really great. Everything about the fight scenes, everything about the interaction with, with Vader saying to him, the years have made you weak and you should have killed me when you had the chance. It just feels like it's just all this pain and rage talking to Obi-Wan at that point and he just doesn't really care at all for him. And it ends off with Vader force choking Obi-Wan and literally rubbing him through the fire like how Anakin was in um, Mustafar. And I feel like this is the most um, vicious, this is the most violent we've seen Vader in live action. And even in like Rebels and um, the Clone Wars, we haven't really seen him like this. This is prime Vader and only in the comics really. However, in live action we haven't and I thought this worked really great. Ending up with Obi-Wan escaping. I've seen online where people saying Vader should have gone around the fire. However, I feel like he didn't want to kill him at that point. He just wanted to torture him. He just wanted to make him like hurt before um, doing anything. So I feel like when they encounter next, Vader will be a bit more ruthless with it. He'll go for the kill more. As In this combat fight, he wasn't actually going for the kill. And it was more than Vader just toying with him at the time. So those are my thoughts on the episode. Let me know down below what your thoughts are and how would you rate this episode compared to the first two that we saw.